what we did before before it started. We don't have a defensive unit, so what we decided to do, we got we identified. And I'm not going to go into all of them because I don't want to be critical of you know. But we we felt like there were about eight guys that we thought were extremely critical. If they would have a good spring, they could get in the mix and either pressure somebody for a starting job or be a solid two deep player. So what we're doing right now, honestly, defensively, we just we're just trying to, to evaluate individuals, and see who's made that step, and. Uh, but I'll go ahead and say, I mean, some guys that need to step it up is Corey Addison. Uh, we need a backup boundary safety. Uh, Jimmy Legree need to have a good spring. Marquette right now is showing a little bit more than he is, but uh, Jimmy needs to have a good spring. We don't have a backup boundary safety. Uh, need to identify a backup wheel linebacker. Uh, some guys have been up and down, but there's been some good stuff. I, I see Quinn Smith, I see, I see Tony, but sometimes there's some things that leave me yeah. believe it not ready. Chaz Sutton. Needs to have a good spring. Has had a very average spring, uh, but th that's some of the guys that we feel like this is their time to take advantage of the reps and get better and, and give us some depth that we really need. But when you got the kind of guys sitting on the sideline that we do right now to try to make any kind of evaluation of where we are as a defensive unit uh, is just you know it's pointless. The guys that are sitting out right now. That for those eight or so guys that they get more yeah, absolutely. That's what, that's what we're saying. The guys better take advantage of your time, you know, and, and make the steps, and make the improvement, and uh, you know, challenge for those jobs. And some of them legitimately, if they step up to their potential, they're challenged to compete for that starting job, and the others could give us a very solid 2D, which we never had at any point in time last year. So that was something that we hope we about what about eight. Eight practices in, yeah, so we're about yeah. halfway, you know, yeah. and they still got some time to improve. But uh, right now, it's, it's really, you know, to me, it's been a little bit disappointing. That some of those guys have not stepped up and looked better. Is, uh, is Quay Gilchrist working here on you know, that too deep in the middle yeah, of it? He's one of the guys, and of course, Rodney's out. Josh Dickerson's had a very good spring. Uh, Quavis is obviously behind him because he doesn't know the scheme and has not uh, had the experience. I'm really pleased with Josh. Uh, I think he'll challenge Rodney. If, if, if we started tomorrow, that's split time. It'll be about 50-50 deal. What about the rest of the ability? I think he's going to be fine. I, I'll say this. At this time last year, I think he is ahead of where Josh and Tony were. He's picked things up faster. But he has not been as natural in there as far as just playing fundamentally as those two guys were. So that's the big thing right now. He's still feel, I think I still see him feeling his way around as an inside linebacker because that's not what he played in junior college. In high school, he was a big running back DB. So I think he's still trying to get comfortable in that. But physically, he's got the two. He's probably the biggest linebacker I got. Really fast. You know, not as quick in there right now as he needs to be because I don't think he sees things and reacts to them as well as he should. What about some of the guys that were banged up today? Devontae, I'm Kenny. concerned. I don't know. I haven't heard any reports yet, but there were at least two of them, Kenny and Devontae. You know, those are serious injuries. Those would be major. Major. I don't know. I know both of them were holding the show, so it could be something as mild as a stinger or something as serious as a damage. I haven't heard anything. But Kenny especially. Well, yeah, that would be absolutely pain in the neck the rest of spring to try to find another body to put in there. But on the long view, he's had a pretty good spring. Uh, I think Brad's been fairly pleased with Kenny's progress. And he's getting to the point where we would you know, say, hey, we've got a, we've got a dependable 2 deep tackle. So I hope he doesn't miss the rest of spring for two reasons. He, he needs it. He needs to continue. And then we're already down to just asking guys to go in and line up for us. Sometimes they don't know where to line up, so now obviously they ability wise, you know, just hanging up. So I hope he I hope he's not out in the spring. Y'all hadn't heard anything on him, have you? We're hoping you have. Yeah, if we can help us win. Uh, that's what we gotta do. Bottom line, I recruited him. I know what's in the kid's heart. I know what he wants to do. And uh, he could probably play 15 positions on the team, but he wants to be an NFL defensive back. And, and you know, that's what he wants. To, that's what he wants to develop as. And, and, uh, obviously, he's getting better at that. He's gotten better, but uh, that's his only concern. He'll do what he has to do to help the team win. But he wants to be an NFL defensive back. And, 
what he told me 15 months ago, and nothing's changed. That's, that's what was in his heart and in his goals. And, uh, that's just the way he is. I, mean, that, I think that's all he's trying to express. When Steve started talking about learning that package, to now have your feelings about it changed at all in terms of you know, I mean, Stephon okay did some of that stuff in high school. He, you know, he knows the stuff. He, he just – Stephon knows he'll never be a quarterback in two years, and, and he knows he won't going to be a running back. He doesn't want to be a wide out. He wants to be an NFL defensive back, and that's all I think he's ever trying to say to the media is, anything I can do to help, wonderful, but I want, I'm going to be a defensive back. It's a little bit frustrating for you, though, to be up trying to call signals. You see Luke on the field and looking at the sidelines. You see Cliff and Travian and Rodney. Chris calling all these guys as standing there not being able to play? Yeah, because we, you know, although they're good enough to play, yeah. it wouldn't hurt them to be getting some reps. Right, yeah. now, I'll be quite honest with you, some of those guys wouldn't be getting the reps on them. You know, they'd be getting very few reps right. if they were out there, right, yeah. but they'd be getting reps. Yeah. I mean, they'd really be getting reps over on the practice field. Yeah. And Travian's a good football player, but you know, Travian redshirted one year. Yeah. He's not an old man. He could use a little bit of this, but uh, Culliver, Culliver, you know, Cullen was a good player, but he, he could have used another good spring. So it's not that they couldn't have benefited from this, too. But uh, you just it's two years in a row now. We just had to put off the, to the uh, fall of figuring out who we are and what can we do and who are our best 11 and who's the next 11, and, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like that again this year. It's going to be probably two weeks into the fall before we really get a feel for what we are as a unit, you know, who fits in where and where our depth is and all that. Back about those guys and where they are yeah, oh, we're fine. Paul, you know, Paul, could, uh, to be honest with you, he probably could have practiced this spring. Yeah. It wouldn't have been very smart for us to. Uh, the other guys are further behind him because they were further behind on the calendar. And uh, frankly, haven't had the rehab he has. But, uh, you know, they everything we hear from the trainer has been extremely positive. There'd be no reason to think we're not going to get them all back. He's done pretty good. Uh, he's a natural hitter. The one thing that we've, we found when we moved him in there, sometimes his angles are not good. So it's good that we got him in there this spring because he, he's overrun a few things where he's untouched, just over aggressive. And uh, I think I think this spring he's really really getting better. And he's learning how to do some things in there. Safety other than just off the natural ability. Is it something to pick up that fast? Well, I, that's the other thing. If he could have just even done one on ones and just pass it in the spring, I don't think his color would be a good corner, I mentioned it because it won't take him that long to learn it. It's not an extremely difficult position to learn uh, mentally. And he's got long arms, he's got great makeup speed. Once he learns how to play technique, I think he'll be a really good player, but right now he hasn't had a lot of that. Is there a pretty wide gap between Shaq and the other contenders at the, uh, at the uh, Will linebacker spot? You know, physically and ability-wise, there is no gap. Right. In fact, he probably doesn't have some of the tools they yeah. have, but as far as being a complete football player and the mental mistakes and the consistency, there's a gap. I've been pleased that Quinn, Quinn's shown some improvement. But Tony's been a lot better than he was before. But uh, they both right now, it's a little bit hot and cold, and it's got to be more consistent before they would even be close to coming on the field and, you know, not having a drop-off at that position. How about, 